That's one of the saddest things I've that's heard in, <laughs> in months. I keep telling you, I, but you have to understand, in like... In months, that's just the saddest to, thing I've ever heard saying, in my but life. This is what Booze is the worst. <laughs> and that's, that was my thing. That, was my that, that pairs well with anger. Yeah. So, man, to yeah. people out there, get yourself a nice brown liquor if yeah. you want to end. If you don't know how to get out of the relationships in your life, just do the... <laughs> keep, just sit there with half a pink Woody. <laughs> is that what the wood part is about? <laughs> Annie and Wood? <laughs> Hello, Insanis, Woodies, Shoodies, Coodies. Never or Woodies, fannies, never Coodies. Never Woodies, never Coodies, or Fannies. Enchanties. There's oh a new one. Uh, this is a very exciting episode. Todd, did you have a good time watching this episode? Oh, it was so fun and it was so cool. We were pretty excited that Bill Burr came to my house. Bill Burr, Bill, 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 Bill Burr, Bill Burr. <laughs> Bill Burr. He came all the way to our house. He uh, hung out with us. Comment below if you think Bill Burr held the snakes. You'll find out at the end. But just comment below right now whether Bill Burr held the snakes, how many he held, and how long he held them for. Winner <laughs> gets a chicken dinner. Guys, we had a wonderful time. We're so excited. I wanted to represent Philly because I talked a little smack on you guys, but I love you. I F with, with you. Oh my God. Anyway, I have some really fun shows coming up tonight. It's probably already sold out, but there may be some tickets to the Late Show at the Comedy Store tonight. I have Burt Kreischer, Andrew Santino, Lizzie Cooperman, Ron uh, Funches, and Trevor Wallace. What a show. So lucky. So blessed. So many friends. You can also see me with Lizzie Cooperman in San Jose on November 17th and 18th, Houston, Texas, December 15th and 7th to 17th. Edmonton, Alberta, Canada at the Comic Strike, January 12th and 13th. Jacksonville, Florida, January 19th and 20th. And so many more to come. So go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. Subscribe, comment, like, and click that bell. Oh. Bill Burr, Bill Burr, Bill Burr. Welcome to Annie Wood. Hi guys, welcome to Annie Wood. I have my colleague, my new friend, Bill Burr. Um, I got him to come to Venice, I don't know how I did it. It feels like a trick. He's here, he's in the studio. Um, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, so you went to the wrong place first? Yes, I did. I thought, I don't know, I thought it was in the valley. Well, that's good. I want it over an hour. Uh, right. This part of Valley. Well, don't we shouldn't say that because we go, all right, it's an hour away from the Valley. Yeah, and then, and then everyone's going to know everywhere where we yeah. live. Yes. Let's do it last time. Let's start. All right, last okay, time. let's start. Take three. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome to Annie Wood. I have a comedian, uh, writer, but <laughs> he used it's to write <laughs> before he, was allowed, he wasn't allowed to. I'm um, allowed to say that I write. But okay. the, the acting side, I'm not allowed he to talk act, about He doesn't act, he's not an actor. We have not seen him in anything. And uh, <laughs> But it's Bill Burr, guys. What's going on? Thanks for coming. Um, Thank you for having me. I didn't know you were from Philadelphia. Yeah, I'm from Cheltenham. Oh, all right. Philly. I was just sticking up for you guys. Oh, really? Yeah, I just feel like anytime they show a Philly fan, it has to be the most inebriated <laughs> moron like they do that and, they, they, and then they create like these things. Like I've gone to games in Philly. There's some animals there, but yeah. there's animals everywhere. Like when you go to Buffalo, Bill's game, <laughs> everybody's not jumping on a table. Yeah. And when you go to a Patriots game, there's not a lighthouse on every f***ing corner. Now, now they show the lighthouse in the stadium, but they used to always zoom in on this light, lighthouse and they would show like fishermen and shit like that. And you're just like, I, uh, I kind of unload trucks. And I, I mean, don't... I'm glad you're defending Philadelphia fans, but it is. <laughs> Do you remember? Was it when the Eagles won? When someone ate shit off the ground after they won? I know, but it was but, like eating. But like, that's a parody. Yeah. They're eating a parody. Like I'm a I'm a Philly fan. I got I got a, a one up this thing. Like I want authentic. Yeah. Like somebody like just seriously like they have lost control of their alcohol problem. Not just <laughs> like, I mean I don't. I came up in the '80s, so like a lot of their drunken behavior. You know, minus the body fluids and the, uh, the scat. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we had a guy like stabbed a police horse on a Monday night game, and we we couldn't have Monday night football there for like years and years and years. This and was years. in uh, the Patriots, yeah, the Patriots, yeah. yeah. So I mean, 
But it just, there wasn't a 24 hour news network to like sort of glorify it. It's really yeah. some, such a weird time. You can't make fun of a fat, fuck, yeah. right? But like they glorify, <laughs> if it's done in a certain way, it's sort of like glorified. Like, I don't know what's what anymore. Well, so. it is like the Philadelphia character. I, I know what you're saying, but it is like, I think Philly likes it and owns it. They like to be trash. I think. I, I think, don't know I any think Philadelphia I people actually, that are like, we got to get rid of this reputation. No, no, no. I just think I think they're great fans. I like talking sports with them. Yeah. They they know the game. They're passionate about the game. Yeah. It's not like they're f***ing like swaying in the breeze <laughs> with some dog shit hanging out. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think all of those videos are funny, but it's just like, it's not like, you don't go to a game and everybody's on the ground eating dog shit. It's just, it's just it not what it is. It was just funny that after the win, it was the dog shit. That was the part where I went, okay. But my brother, I feel like my brother brings that attitude to my shows when I do shows in Philly. My older mm. brother kind of brings the same vibe of someone that would eat shit off the ground. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah no, we just definitely. <laughs> you know really... what's funny is I just met somebody. I was at a wedding and I met somebody and she had gone to a school in Boston, college, right? And then she was just talking about how dumb guys were. I was like, well, you moved to Boston. She, you know, what, did you, what did you think was going to happen? I go, a bunch of meatheads. I go, wait a minute. I go, did you see Goodwill Hunting? And I go, did, did you think Matt Damon was going to show you up and help you with your math? And she started laughing going, I did. She's like, I I've did. been dating all of these janitors. I can't, I, I can't imagine the disappointment. Like, Because what's funny about Massachusetts is some of the great colleges in the world are there. Yeah, it's hard. But none of yeah. us go to yeah. them. Like, none of the locals do. Well, maybe now. Well, the most accurate thing of Goodwill Hunting was the f***ing, uh, the, the, there was a Boston guy pushing a broom at MIT. Like, I, I'm like, I, I know this guy. That's how I got in. Yeah, I know this guy. Yeah, my twin brother is, uh, he works for NBC Sports in Boston. So he had to become a Celtics guy. He had to abandon Philadelphia for his job and his wife. I don't understand that at all. Abandoning his sports loyalties? Well, he had to because he works, he, his wife, so his wife's family's there. She wins. He's, she wasn't moving to Philly, and I appreciate that about her. She was like, why would I move? Not that it's a full they're, competition they're very, between They're our... very similar cities, but like, I don't, I don't know how you have, long you have to live in Philly to figure out the one ways. Because <laughs> yeah. everything is like, you know, one way this way, one way that yeah. way. They're like, seven this way, now the next <laughs> four are that way, two, one. It's just like, yeah, I, I, I can't figure that out. It but... does. Uh, it takes a while to get around. No, but I, I actually... Uh, I was rooting for the Phillies because they remind because they, they reminded me of the 04 Red Sox yeah. with the beards. They look like you know like I could just I knew fans of the other teams hated them just because of their faces, and I was <laughs> like that reminds me of because I remember Yankee fans like what are those fucking beards? You know I don't like Johnny Damon and all this shit. So anyway, well I only know if Taylor Swift's dating people. I don't know anything <laughs> else. How do you feel about Taylor Swift ruining football? <laughs> I, I'd be honest with you, I don't know anything about that. You don't know about it? How are you keeping away from it? They're, they're forcing it in everyone's face. They're not. No, not everyone's face. No, if you just watch the games. <laughs> I will say that I... I have noticed that Travis Kelsey's getting some more national commercials, and he's a good actor. Yeah, and he's getting cuter, too. He's, he's did something. He chiseled up the jawline somehow. He Matt Reifed himself. He got himself real cute. <laughs> Matt Reif is the arena guy. Yeah. Okay, Have I'm catching up. I haven't met him. I'm old. I don't know. I, I know his name. <laughs> Every know. generation has that one guy that goes out and crushes it and then like gets a ton of shit for being successful. Yeah. People, you need people like He just like becomes that. in the zeitgeist. Like he's, he's great for comedy because he's going to bring a but bunch. But he's a, he's a nice guy too. He was yeah. never, he's never been mean or shitty to anyone. So okay. everyone's like, all right, here we go, Rife. Let's go, baby. Yeah, all right. Okay, good deal. I just, so if they're talking shit, you're like, oh, you're really mad. But you know what I always think about? I think about the, I don't know where it came from, but it, they used it when when they first opened the mothership up. They used this voiceover of yours talking about like the grind of comedy and they were going through all the rooms. Do you know this? It was like a, it was like a. Oh, no, no, no. Reel. He sent me that. He sent me that. Yeah. yeah, it was like a reel. And it was like you like. You... Yeah, I won't say put the music under it. It, it actually <laughs> sounded like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> it was like Let's a commencement that, speech. If you score anything, it's you can, you can brainwash people what you want them to think it, with the music behind it it sounded like um a, like um like that you were giving a graduation speech for kyle cease's comedy class <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that and then he became I remember a, kyle cease. then he became a motivational speaker and i always say he kyle ceased to do comedy yeah. <laughs>
I'm like, Kyle. Hey. He learned how to make some money. I bet you he's hey, rich as hell. Good, good for, for you, him. Kyle. Good for him. I'm not here to trash Kyle C's. <laughs> I like Kyle C's. I just think it's, you know, if your last name C's, you stop doing comedy, it seems like he's... Dude, that, it's just literally... That dog's a borderline human. I know. It's so it's, weird. I feel like I just woke him up. Sorry. He's floppy. He's just a floppy guy. I want to call you Tom, but I know it's Randy. But Tom Tommy. Randy has the same vibe. He, about, I am noticing that his... Randy... Thomas, Randall Thomas. Randall Thomas. Well, it's Randall. His name is Randy Jackson Quaid after our favorite Randys. Oh, Randy Quaid. Yeah, Randy's been in some big That's ones. a good guy. Where's he at? Is he still, he's run away from, he didn't want to pay his nanny. <laughs> I don't know. I think he. Uh... I don't mean to talk shit on everyone that exists. <laughs> I, I really have just. I mean, you're just fucking. <laughs> just <laughs> T-ball here. Oh my Everyone god! Everyone from Randy Quaid to Kyle Cease can get it, I guess. All right. Cease, um, I'm proud of you. I'm, yeah, I'm rooting for Randy Quaid. <laughs> hey, who hasn't gone on the internet and read too much conspiracy theory <laughs> and then made some life decisions? You know, if you didn't like, look, uh, we're all part of the same Ponzi scheme. You yeah. know, you either roll with it or you try to fight it. You got to respect the guys that try and fight it. If you didn't like the Red Sox beards, you probably didn't like that Randy that Randy Quaid conspiracy no, I like the Red theory Sox beard. beard. I'm just saying to the New Yorkers, oh, okay. big New York calling. Um, oh. Maybe, who knows? But um, oh, I want to talk to you about that thing, but we can't. It's okay. Yes, she's referring to something, something that, that we're I can't not, talk yes, about. because thing, yes. But it's but, good but, and but, you but, should. If you know what I'm saying, you should see it. <laughs> It's all right. You know, there was a silver lining to that was I didn't have to go and promote it. I was yeah, like, that's oh, true. man, I, I would love to go on to this morning and fucking talk show while they're making pancakes or whatever. And then I, I get dropped into that and it just wouldn't work. I know. I was going to say, because now it would be like Hoda and is it like George Bush's daughter? Has like a TV show in the morning? I don't know. George Bush's daughter has a TV show in the morning. I feel like you and I, we watch opposite TV. <laughs> I don't I don't watch it. I, like it would I, fit together like a yin and yang. Like everything that I'm watching, you're not well, watching. Well, maybe that could like be true. You're, you're in the, uh, what's her name there? The lady there who's dating the guy in the Chiefs. You're in that world. Taylor Swift. No, no, yeah. no. I did go to the concert, but as a cultural experience. I don't like how you divorced yourself from that mania like you were above it. Look, I got, when I was there, I went, this is amazing. I went, this is wild. I will tell you this. That video of every time she starts the song and those girls losing their minds. They scream. was fucking awesome. It was like, but you know what like I they, felt? It was just like. <gasps> <laughs> and I was sitting there going like, man, I loved ACDC when I was a kid. I never loved it like that. It's so. a, They're losing their minds. They're having like a religious experience. Well, watching that, I can't imagine how frightening it must be her to be in public. I mean, it's just oh, like, it's, it's got to be like yeah. a horror movie. Well, Invasion they're... of the Body Snatchers, remember they, they just like point at you? Yeah, she's famous on a different level. Do you get um, a lot of problems in the streets? People bugging you? People in the streets, beefs? No. Bugging you? No, I don't. Take a I, I am, uh, I am, I've slow cooked my way to where I'm at. <laughs> 31 years. Um, yeah, nobody gives a shit. Is that me? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that was in case you called because I was trying to find your place. Um, yes, I went with the standard ring. Yes, I'm a basic <laughs> bitch. That was very uh, Taylor Swift of you to have so, just that. A basic ring? Well, I mean, it doesn't fucking, doesn't say anything about me. I'm yeah. sorry. I know it's supposed to be like, oh, no, yeah, that, that is from no country from old men. <laughs> I like cinema. My, uh, my mom has the ultimate worst one. It's like a duck quacking. It's like so annoying. It's the most annoying. And it's like, of course, it's I like my she, mom She has thinks it. it's funny too, she right? She thinks it's hilarious. That's awesome. My whole family thinks they're very funny. It's fun. My shows, I've just given my Philadelphia shows to my families. I go, okay, this isn't going to be about my performance. Or I have to like warn people. I'm like, this isn't going to be. Do you come from a big family? No, I have a twin brother and an older brother. And then my mom and dad. And we, I mean, we have other people, but it's basically. It's that's just, loud enough. There's just no one that doesn't want to be in front of the camera. There's not one person that's like, I'll just sit back. Everyone's like, no one jazz hands in. Yeah. <laughs> No school shooter vibe. There's no school shooters. <laughs> everybody's, Unless... everybody's all about the, so, the social aspects of things. They just want um, attention. Like another one I know. His penis is out. I show the audience. Well, I mean, oh, God. He has a, he has a, <laughs> speaking of school shooters, he's got a tiny one. If he oh, was boy. a real boy, he'd be, he'd be <laughs> trouble. <laughs> um, okay, so... 
I'm a psychedelic girl. Okay. I like the hallucinogens. I know that Me you did too. some mushrooms and had a... Well, I feel like when I met you, when did you start dating your wife? 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Okay. So when I knew you, you were already like settled in and... and I don't know. When did, it, when did I meet you? I met you they like... Everything just runs together. I know. I don't know. Um, when did you start coming to the store? I got past the store in 2012. But I don't know if I like met you then. Okay. But I hadn't, I hadn't done mushrooms yet. No, you did mushrooms pretty recently, right? Didn't do you think having kids? Because your whole like your whole personality was like being angry and stuff like that, and then now you're. It wasn't about being angry. You just were angry. I just was <laughs> angry. That wasn't this. This is my brand. <laughs> uh, no, I was. I was. Uh, yeah, I was sitting on a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well. And some people paid for that, <laughs> myself included. So uh, yeah. yeah, the mushroom thing was an accidental thing. Uh, I didn't take it to do to learn anything about myself. Yeah, I just took it the, the same reason. Like I didn't never tried weed until I was like in my late thirties, and I was just like, "What am I never gonna try it? Like, let me just see what it is." And I, I don't like I don't like weed. I'm not a, a weed, weed guy. I don't like it. It's stupid. It's just like you smoke it, and then like you're up at three in the morning making a sandwich and eating Fritos and killing everything you did at I the gym. I wake <laughs> up with chips like all over my body like, yeah it's not it's no, not i love all these different this one this one is like that's what they say they go creative. The yeah. this one but it's like no i just it's weed it just makes me high and then i just want to laugh yeah and then i want to eat something i shouldn't eat and then go to sleep that's every strain are you trying an indica i know i don't fucking want. why would i try to force myself to be into weed that's what i always think i'm like but i it seems to do things for other people it's never been a medicine for me it's always i don't even sleep well when i well i think weed. i think in its natural state it probably is i don't think this legalized weed where they put like sugar in it like those fucking gummies you see like the sugar stuck to it it looks like a fucking <laughs> kids candy from the 70s like well, I'm, and then you wake up like weed hung over like oh i get yeah it's horrible because yeah, i not, don't drink too so then it's like yeah no booze is the worst <laughs> and that's that was my thing that was my that, that pairs well with anger yeah <laughs> so yeah. people out there get yourself a nice brown liquor if you yeah. want to end if you don't know how to get out of the relationships in your life just do that <laughs> they'll do it for you yeah i was a, like get blacked out and trash my apartment gal where people would be like what's going on up there and i'm like leave me alone Oh, you were. Oh. I'm looking for my keys. One guy. Oh, you were like, like one of like those great author alcoholics. <laughs> <laughs> you were that level of a drunk. She's she's an artist. She's creative, man. I was like, my teeth were getting loose. Like things were weird. I I went hard, but I thought everyone else was too. It was funny when I quit drinking and I would like tell stories and people were like, "This is not normal." I'm like, oh shit. I was a Ron Burgundy drunk. <laughs> Like I would sit up late night and I had my scotch glass. Yeah. It was very like mahogany, you know, rich mahogany. And I would sit and I would watch classic TV and they would all be boozing on it or like, oh, another great one to drink to, to make you not feel like an alcoholic, like you're not drinking alone was that Peaky Blinders was fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Peaky Blinders, the first season did more damage to my liver than college. <laughs> I'm trying to think of if I have sat in, I was like Jaeger party. Out the wild, but I remember this guy. It was like oh. when MySpace was the main thing that had just started, and I wasn't doing comedy yet. I was living in New Mexico, and I was just like I wouldn't be friends with anyone I hadn't met before. And this guy kept trying to be friends with me on MySpace, and I was like, "Why the hell is this fucking man? I've never met trying to be friends with me on MySpace." And I go, I'm like, I was bartending or doing something at the time, and I see him at a bar, and I'm like, "Why are you? I've never met you. Why are you trying to be my friend on?" on MySpace and he goes, you don't remember meeting me? And I go, no, he goes, oh, I found you in your apartment, half in the apartment and half out. I heard, I thought someone was getting beat up, a woman was being beat up. I came up, you were passed out, your keys were in your door and you were going, where the fuck are my keys? I was like trying to drive. <laughs> oh my God. So he like tucked me in. I was like, thank you for not dating me, appreciate it. He like tucked me, I didn't have no memory of him. And then oh, he wanted you to went stay friends. <laughs> I, only, I only got that drunk a few times. I was of course <laughs> driving. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to call it the slideshow. <laughs> and I was like, I'm at the party. Shong ching. Now I'm driving my car. I just can't remember it. Like those old uh, Viewmaster things that you would click. I, like the level, you know, when they say that if you ever got arrested for drinking and driving, that you had to do it at least six, 700 times, the odds of getting caught 100% was true. I think I think I was, I had Hall of Fame numbers. We, we just, it, we didn't, we were idiots. And it was just something you did. 
and we did it twice a week. Yeah, it was fun. I don't know why it was the most fun thing I ever did. I, I had a motor scooter. Well, then somebody I was dies. That's why. No, and it's then so people bad. I know. Kid. It's like it's yeah. horrible. That's why. Uber, like one of the great things about today is all that Uber. Like these but people kids. still get DUIs. That's how fun it is. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not I think, saying you should I think, do it. No, I don't I think, think that's, how, that's how strong drunk courage You're is. You're right. Well, I have to fight him because he drinks. And we, the only time we ever get in fights is when he's like, I'm driving. And I, I will be honest, he may be a better driver than me drunk. <laughs> right. When I'm sober. Right. But I'm just like, I have to like shake and be like, I have a beautiful life. I've worked hard for her. I have to like give him like a speech. <laughs> do you know how hard I've worked to get to where I'm at? You're <laughs> well, not I can taking tell you, you don't want to be in the system ever. Oh, yeah, Even at that level. Even at that fucking level, dude, like the just you fucked up, you yeah. got caught, the laws coming down, you're just on, you're just skimming the surface of that world was just such a fucking, how much money it cost me, the time, the Did fucking, you get DUIs? Oh, I got one. One. I got one, yeah. When and people it, get more than one, you're like, uh oh. Oh, yeah. Well, I came, in Massachusetts, like so many people got busted. That you had to get two before you'd be all right. You're a two-time felon, but they gave you a mulligan on the first one, so yeah. you could say you're not a felon. But the second time you got busted, you immediately you, you had two rings. You know, and you went you back do, to back. <laughs> did you do like mugshot, <laughs> fingerprint, everything? Night in jail, drunk tank. Um, I have them. I I don't really remember the arrest. Like I remember, <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting pulled over. <laughs> And not being nervous. That's how drunk I was. You're I was like, like, I got this. No, I was more like relieved that I could rest because I was yeah. just like, oh my God, this is like so much concentration here. <laughs> Roll all the windows down. It'd be like the middle of winter and have the windows down. Yeah. And I remember when he, he came up, uh, he came up to the window. He goes, where are you coming from? I go, fucking Boston. And he goes, fucking Boston. You want to get out of the car? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> And it went from, yeah, I had a beer between my legs. This is what they said. I don't remember. It said it fell into the road. So then you, <clears throat> you go and you get arraigned. So I'm down there and it's all of these guys that did like real shit, like dealing drugs and stuff. And yeah. I'm just this jerk off working in a warehouse, paying his way through college. And they remember everything that you say and they fucking read it in front of everybody. Oh no, they do? Yeah, and it's like a bad read too. Because they said, we asked the guy where he was coming from, he said, fucking Boston. It's like, that's not like what I said. The cadence was more like I said, fucking, fucking yeah. Boston. I was trying to remember. And then, and then they said, oh, they had all that. He was in the back of the car. He was like, at first he was belligerent. And then he said, I'm not mad at you. You're just doing your job. And I was just, <laughs> I was, yeah, that was uh, like he said, I'll suck your dick if you drop the charges. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's they, gotta they, be a they, lot they, worse they for had, the ladies. <laughs> they had it all. Had all. It, it was yeah. My buddy had the best one. His his was the best one. It was like a pro I still remember it. Like he read his police report on my answering machine. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> so that was the thing. Like we used to read our police reports because everybody got busted. And he didn't even tell me he got busted. He just read his police report. So I had like three messages. It was like, and it just immediately, you know, my mother calling me, hey, yeah. let's go down to the laugh factory. And they're just like, beep. And I just hear, hardcore Boston accident. Approximately 4.35 in the morning, <laughs> I noticed a maroon VW Fox blowing its horn, trying to pass on the right. <laughs> As I pulled him over. After numerous times asking the defendant to stay in the car, he got out of the car threw his keys at my feet and repeatedly stated, lock me up, I'm fucked up. <laughs> and they read you, that. They read that as a thing. Sometimes you're just wasted. You're like, all right, you got me. Here we are. I um, <laughs> I had the female version of that where- And then he got a female judge oh. and he was a good looking guy and she thought he was cute okay. and he got less than me. Oh. <laughs> but I, my, my, my alcohol level was higher than his. I forget what his was. I, I, I almost got a two. I had a one nine. I mean, I was fucking- I, I know was, it's great. Well, you do I have was, to be that fucked up. I mean, it's I was, really like I was fucked. <laughs> I had it. I got pulled over once in New Mexico. I was friends with the cop. It was a small town, you know, so I, I lived in Santa Fe for seven years. And I. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Isn't that weird? Santa Fe, no, New Mexico. You like beautiful. it? Oh, yeah, no, you, I love it. Oh. I like it. What? You ever, yeah, because you sometimes are there for things. But shows? Maybe, uh, 
No, I can't promote anything new. I can okay, promote, okay, I can okay, promote okay. Breaking Bad. I think okay, that okay, thing's already okay, out. Okay, I was like, <laughs> it's already I, uh, out. It, it, it won uh, awards. It runs a schmaking schmad. <laughs> I, uh... No, I like those those states that Isn't uh, it cool? Well, I, the older I've gotten, first, you know, when you're young, you want to be where everybody yeah. is. And then once you've done that, and now you're just the old guy at the party, you can't go to the party anymore. And then it's just a traffic jam of young people going to a party that you're not going to go to. And it's just like, why don't you just live in a little more... Yeah, I, I I like a lot. I like parts of like Tennessee, Wisconsin, New Mexico. I ca- and up a uh, what is it? House. What the fuck is that? Seattle up in there. Answer. I like Portland, Maine. Yeah, I'm kind of becoming like, but I know I would go out of my mind. I I have that weird fucking thing where like some days I just want to talk to people, and then mm-hmm. other days I'm sort of I can just sit on my back porch and stare at the trees. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that's normal. People look at me, they think I'm a veteran. It's like, no, <laughs> just a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, New Mexico, we, but I went to college there, so it was a weird, like, it is where people go to, like, relax and calm down, but we were. Yeah, but you have, like, raging. as much as you are a raging alcohol, you have very chill energy to be around. So, like, this whole, I'm from Philly. <laughs> half in my apartment, half out. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it must be, surp- was that while. surprising the first time that came out? No, I knew, I had a feeling she was like one of those girls, oh. but she, I like that she did it and she's done with it. You know, that's, yeah, that's she, good. She has to her me. behind the music. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh my God. But then there were a couple, because I quit drinking when I was 25, right when I started comedy. That's great. Yeah. Thank you God. learned early. I didn't. I think I quit at I was, 45. But I was like bleeding a lot. Like I was waking up literally like, uh, are my teeth in? Like I was being like a mess. Like I'm going to die. Oh, wow. When I moved to New York, I moved to New York to do comedy and nobody was like drinking as hard as me. I was like, what's going on, guys? I kept thinking I was going to fall in the subway. I was oh, going to yeah. be like a drunk. I know a guy did that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got fucked up really bad. That's a deceivingly far fall, and, and it's just it's... metal, and it's a train. He, and he... rats, and people's, like, dropped things. It's oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. He, he took a header, and uh, he was not the same person. <laughs> and, and gradually, he became the same person, but for a while, he was not. That's why I'm laughing about it, because he ended up being all right. But... We, know, we know a couple of those. Ms. Piz. People that couple, took couple, a he- he- couple hit. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I just love that. You know what? I go down to the club. I say hello to you kids. I met you. I fucking well, I do wait, my you know spot and I get remember? the fuck out of here. I get you the fuck out of here. You complimented me on a joke in the lab at the improv a while ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah. I love your stuff. Thank you. It was, but I don't Thank do this joke anymore because I, I can't say the word. But I'll tell it to you now, the joke. It was that I was like gluten-free beer. It was back a while ago. <laughs> You probably had the momentum of other jokes before. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think yeah, you yeah. sold it a little harder. <laughs> <laughs> she just gave me the complete dry. Just I woke up in the like morning. I gave you a Twitter, a tweet. I had a chicken cross the road. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I get to the other side. You know what? That made both of us look bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that was she wrote that, and he liked that. We just gave a bunch of people hope to start stand up comedy. You get compliments for oh. shit like that. You put you probably up. You know, you're bringing the vibe. <laughs> the vibe. You got a vibe. Bringing the vibe. Now you stopped by the comedy show last night. How was your set? How was the audience? It wasn't you? good. The audience was not good. No, no, no. It was me, and I and I went in there knowing. I, I was in there. I had defeat. Well, then in my I'm head. blaming you I, for I what knew. the audience was by the time I got on. No, they were fun. There okay. was nothing wrong with okay. them. Okay. Okay. There was nothing wrong with them. That was that was. I had you know. I never blame I had, the audience I, unless it was last night. I never blame the audience unless no, I'm doing stand up in New York City in the summer of 2019. Then okay. I then I like it was the worst summer of stand up. I was doing a movie back there, and uh, it was I I couldn't fucking believe. What was it? Do you think? What was it? It was the height of the oh, post Me right, Too right. and everything. And yes, just like, is yeah. th- you going to get am I canceled and all of that yeah. dumb shit? That What's fucking hilarious is the people that were doing that to people are now acting like it never happened. Uh-huh. Like that wasn't a thing. Like I didn't realize how much that fucked with my head as a performer until I, I did during the pandemic. I went out and I did Chappelle's thing out 
at his place and uh, all the bag, all the phones were in bags. Yeah. Ooh. And I, and I could say That's whatever so I wanted and I had forgotten what had been taken away. Like, yeah. wait, this is stand up used to be fun. Like, yeah, I wasn't up there going are... like, Oh, don't say that. Oh, what if somebody just takes this part of the joke I and know. then fucking blah, 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 blah. And then that they really helped me. So I just kind of was just like, I need to go back to that mindset. And I don't care what these people think because this is not what it was that started. What started it was like, there's some really bad people out there doing really bad right, things to women. Yeah. Okay, that's what it was about. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't about me doing a 930 <laughs> spot at the fucking strip and being like, I didn't like the 37th word of that set. You can now no longer make a living. <laughs> it just, it got wildly out of control. Well, so. there was, I did a show with, with Tim Dillon at the Improv the other day and it was like an industry showcase. So it was already kind of like- He's a, fucking hilarious. Yeah, I loved him. He's the best. But we were like doing the show. He likes me together because if there's industry in the audience, I go wild. I'm like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to see me be stiff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but some girl like tried to get offended at something he said. I can't remember what the joke was about. Oh, it was like about trans something. But it wasn't. It's like, it's like Tim's gay. I'll like, be honest with you. I don't believe in people being offended. I don't either. But she I looked. Think, she I went think, like this. She went, I think. Ah. I think what she looked it, and no one gave her like a proof. I, 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 what I feel like it is, is it's a, it's just a new way for narcissists to get the spotlight mm -hmm. on them. It's like the spotlight was on you. You were doing the show. They couldn't handle it. They right. have to make it about them and what they, you know. Right. Like, and I think that that's something that, you know, they talk about how much uh, autism there is out there. Oh, I, everyone's I think nar autistic. Narcissism. Yeah. I don't know what's in the food now that's creating that, but I think somewhere <laughs> along, whenever that expression for me came out, that was yeah. somewhere where narcissism was starting to peak, started to gain momentum. My story, what is it people say? They go, my, that's my, how is it? Living my best life. You know what I love about living? You know what I love about? That's my truth. They go, my truth. I go, there's a, the truth. Your yeah, truth. Yeah, my about? truth. What about that truth? Yeah, that's your version. What are the facts? I mean, your truth. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. It's a fucking wonderful way. <laughs> your truth. It's a wonderful way to use the word true. But have you ever had I'm like- I'm not lying. That's just my truth. I like attract people that are so crazy too. My whole life I've always- I been... gotta say that to my wife the next my time truth. I'm in an argument with her. And that's you my said truth. this, this, and this. No, I didn't. I, I said, how are you? Well, that's my <laughs> that's truth. My that's truth. My, <laughs> truth. <laughs> my truth. You know what I love too? I love the, uh, I'm living my best life. Living your best life never involves you helping out somebody <laughs> who needs help. It's always about you at like a spa or fucking, yeah. you know, doing the heart hands with like a fucking canyon behind or you. Or there could be a post of you doing something nice for someone. Yeah. I don't like those either words. Just like, you know, those so people weird. that like, there's one guy, this guy Murph's life, who actually really seems to be fucking great. Then there's other people where it's just like, you can just go help that homeless guy. You had to make a fucking short film about it. Is this a, did you really want to? It's so, it's wild. I want to see the outtakes of that. No, no, he's too dirty. That guy's too dangerous looking. Uh, that, uh, like they cast the homeless person that they go and they help. <laughs> <laughs> I got to find somebody that is freshly homeless. So they're not crazy. And I don't feel like I'm going to get scratched. And then you film it. And then I'll look like a hero. I was doing Man on the Street. I we Dude, probably this should've... dog is just one of the most unmotivated Isn't fucking. Isn't so funny? He's the floppiest just, boy. Like. Or he's Not even annoying. dogs. Like he just transcends just life in general. He's just sitting there with half a fucking pink Woody. <laughs> is that what the wood part is about? Annie and Wood. This is we're going through. Can we do this? Can we just take a picture of your head under that and his little dog <laughs> dick under that? Annie Wood. You lied. Uh, he gets it gets stuck out. He's got a problem. It's okay, boy. I like that he's he's all right with the size. He's a good boy. He's an ugly, ugly little boy in a cute way. He looks like he fell out of a Dr. Seuss book. Well, he and his legs are really long. He looks like one of the um, Salvador Dali. And he's doing nothing to try to look better. No, no, no. He doesn't even, yeah. he doesn't perk up at all. Like you could have an Instagram page just to remind people to, to be their true <laughs> selves and live their truth. This is his truth, okay? Hold the phone, hold the phone. Hold the phone and hang it up and call your mom and tell her I got another Mind Bloom sponsorship. That's right. Here's a sad fact. 
Traditional antidepressants only work on about 40 to 60% of people. If you've tried a bunch of different serotonin cocktails and nothing has helped, it's time to try Mind Bloom. Listen, let's just say my mind bloomed on Mind Bloom. Todd came and checked in on me. Oh, she you. loves uh, she loves serotonin cocktails, but not as much as Mind Bloom. Listen, I quit I quit cocktails <laughs> years ago, but the only time I'll delve back in is if it's Mind Bloom. There's a new tool to improve your mental health at home ketamine therapy, and this is absolutely amazing stuff. Mind Bloom is the leader in at home ketamine therapy, having safely helped thousands of people, me included, overcome their anxiety and depression. I am not only a sponsor but also a member. Unlike traditional talk therapy, ketamine works quickly and doesn't have any of the unpleasant side effects of traditional antidepressants. In a study of over 1,200 MindBloom clients, 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only four sessions. Ketamine therapy has been a life-changing thing for me. I, listen, I 100% believe in this product. It's so amazing. They send you this kit with all these amazing things in it. There's this memory foam mask actually we are at our house i could go grab it it's down there somewhere she would take this ketamine and she would be on the moon i would be on the moon todd would come and check in on me and i had I said, my where is she where is she and she'd go i'm on the moon 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 i had a support <laughs> system um they set you up with a guide someone that you can talk to about all of your feelings that you have afterwards and before you set your intentions they give you a little journal to write in they have a whole thing set up where you go on their app and the lozenges take seven minutes to, dis to dissolve. So they give you a seven minute like speech or motivational something. And it and then it dings at the end and, you know, it's time to spit it out and to lay back, put the mask on and they play different music. So you can pick different moods, different things you want to do. It is so absolutely freaking awesome. And I cannot believe still that I'm sponsored with the, by this. And I'm so happy they're back. So if you guys don't buy this, you guys are missing out. You could be on the mind bloom moon. The, the mind moon. <laughs> but no, seriously, this is an awesome way to like, ketamine has changed my life. It has helped me so much. It has really helped me deal with a lot of things and realize that there really are no problems. That is my takeaway from ketamine after I did mind bloom was there are no problems and every problem that I have, I have made up and that there really can just be bliss. But um, ketamine is like, really hot on the market now. And Mind Bloom is a great way to get started with it. It's very safe. It's very easy. And they make it just like step by step for you. And it's, it will blow your mind. It'll, it'll bloom your mind right open. Um, it could be time for you to give ketamine therapy a shot. And this is the way to do it right now. Mind Bloom is offering our listeners a hundred dollars off of your first six session program. When you sign up at mindbloom.com slash Anniewood and use the promo code Anniewood. Take the first step and break free from your anxiety and depression with MindBloom. MindBloom.com slash AnnieWood and use promo code AnnieWood. Todd, did you see improvements with me after it? Oh, she was so nice after. Was I mean mean when I went in and nice when I came out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm blessed. Some people, I think, have to lie about their ads, but I get the best ads in the world, okay? You guys, I, you know I am, I have entered a new transitionary age in my life okay but i look good nobody believes my age no one can believe it they think i'm at least 10 to 15 years younger it's true. okay and there is something i have to thank for that and that is one skin okay fall is a beautiful time of year but it can really screw up your skin it gets the changing of the seasons is it's never dry, really a good time. It's dry. You get, ooh, All those leaves, the leaves scratch your face. They fall from the tree and they scratch ugh, you. They poke you. Ugh, I get on your face. You go, ew. Ugh. Oh, there's like pumpkins on you. You spill your pumpkin ugh. spice on your face. You get acne around. You get a, a little uh, acne mustache from the pumpkin After spice. After you eat that turkey dinner, it seeps out of your pores and it creates oh. little little pimples all over and your face. And don't get me started with Christmas. <laughs> oh my God. Those, those Hershey Kisses Santa leaves for you going up to your room. Oh. Yeah, it just it really gives you stuff all over your face. Those um, those candy can oh, have you ever gotten a candy cane rash on your face? Disgusting. Yeah, it's more of a winter thing, but yeah. Oh, we're doing just fall. I was thinking holidays. <laughs> oh my gosh, those trick or treater candies. <laughs> those uh, those candied apples. My oh. mom used to give out candied apples. What an annoying thing to get when you're trick or treating. Anyway. Luckily, our sponsor, OneSkin, gives you hydrated and healthy skin all year round. 
The secret is their OS01 peptide that literally reverses skin's biological age. I am proof of that. It's clinically proven to strengthen the skin barrier, improve skin health markers, and diminish the visible signs of aging. Look, I use this stuff. I use the under eye cream. I use the face cream. I use it along with my other routine. It fits right into it. And I look amazing. People never know my age. They always say, you can't be Max Letterman's twin sister. He's so much older than you. Sometimes when she's sleeping, I just take the bottle, I squirt it in her face. And I rub it in while she's asleep. So I can look younger? So she wakes up. Because you're so afraid that I'm going to start looking older than you? <laughs> she, then she wakes up and she's like 10 years younger. It's I do honestly feel like I'm aging backwards. I really do. Look, I know one well, day I might hit the wall, but you know what's keeping me from that wall is one skin. Most of the other brands are just treating the symptoms of aging, not the cause. And one skin is shaking things up in the beauty space with their cutting edge research and development platform to give you skin that looks and acts younger. Oh, I love that. You know I love peptides. I just say, what is Joe Rogan do? And I just stab myself with a needle. But this actually is peptides that you don't need to stab yourself with a needle. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. One Skin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging so skin behaves, feels, and appears younger. It starts crying, it wants its baba. That's how young my it skin acts. It wants a ninny. It says, give me that ninny. It wants to suckle, suckle, suckle on a nippy, nippy, nippy. Ooh. It's time to get started with your new face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with the code Annie at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code Annie. We only have one body, one skin, and only you can choose to make it better. Age healthy with one skin, along with me. Yeah, no, I've had a lot of people in my life that where they like lie to you, but it's just the two of you. And you're like, but we're the only two people that were there. Why are you like, there's not a third party you're tricking. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? And you're no, like, gee, what's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's like fucking. You're like, uh, no, I, I've, I, I, you know, yeah, I. You've gotten rid of those people? Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten rid of a lot of people. I get, yeah, not, not like a bad way. Of I just, course. I just, no, no, yes. In an, in, in an eloquent way. Eloquent <laughs> way. Um, I just like, it's easy. I like self involved people. Yeah. All you have to do <laughs> is once you don't return two or three texts, it's like not only is it over, you never existed. Yeah. Or they confront you. Okay. All right. I'll take the bait. What happened? I like how you do that. You got little, he, she has little tells. Well, I she had the like hand. I want to talk shit. Hand. I want to talk shit and I can't talk shit because we're public. But Oh, is that what you do? You talk shit on this podcast? No, I want, I, no in my life I do. And then okay. on the show, I'm like, oh, I want to work. I want to live in this world with other people. Yeah. I try to not, I, I'm trying to work on my judgment of others. <laughs> it's really just us. No, know? it's hard. Just judging, just judging part of myself from judging others. But then I'm like, is that bitch myself? No, you're not. There's assholes out there. Some people, that you just... can, some people are just, it's, you know, sometimes it's us. Yeah. How many times do you think you've walked down the street and somebody's going, look at that fucking. A lot of times. <laughs> I sometimes I think about like, I'll just, I, it just strikes me like lightning. I'll have this self-awareness where I, I'll like bust into a coffee shop all loud. And then I'll just think like, what if I was a person writing right there? And they're like, who the fuck is this bitch? Coming in so loud and annoying. Yeah. Oh, I've been. Uh... She has her Karen shirt too. When she wears her Karen shirt, she can't help herself. She goes nuts. <laughs> do you know Meth Syndicate? They do stuff for Josh Adam Meyer show. No. They have like. Um, meth? Meth Syndicate. It's a, it's a t shirt company. Okay. But they have these like awesome t shirts. And so one of them is in the font of corn, the band, but it says Karen. Mm -hmm. And then the back it says, Can I see your manager? Every time I wear the shirt, it's like the best shirt, it gets all these compliments. I inevitably have a meltdown it's there's like a curse when i wear it even if it's under a sweatshirt i'm at an apple so store crying like, i'm crying at an this, apple store is this a performance or is, or is she really, <laughs> at an apple store I'm does like, she not know what it means it's so embarrassing now that i know how crazy it is to lose your shit in public it's so extra embarrassing when i do when i have the full self-awareness of it and i don't see that many oh, i lost people my lose shit on the way over here well, I'm like, he's going to be so pissed at me having to drive to fucking Venice right now. No, no, I was pissed because I was, I had this French lesson on and I had the, 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 the satellite thing telling me where to go. And it's, I don't mind that it interrupts, but it's so fucking, Why does it? it's so fucking long though. 
Why it's does like, it? Turn right onto San Vicente <laughs> and then five more miles to Santa Mon. Well, I can't say like, where you're sure. I just said where you're from. There's <laughs> bleep, bleep, bleep. All right, I'll do that again. Bleep, yeah, bleep, bleep, bleep. I, I fucking. Yeah, and I was like, shut the fuck up. I yelled, shut the fuck up like it was a person. And I was just yes. like, Bill, just, you know roughly where she lives. You either do the French lesson and shut off the map. So I kept with the French lesson. Or maybe turn it into French. Make her give you the directions in French. Uh, are you droite, there yet? Uh, droite à gauche. Is this, yeah. are you far enough from oh, sorry. the fucking mic? Uh, droite oh my uh, God. Gauche. Sorry. He's back in uh, Burbank. I don't <laughs> <laughs> um... So you're learning French? I'm proud of you. You became a helicopter pilot? I'm you learning French stuff. because I want to do a show in Paris, all in French, and, and then tell them what assholes they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's my motivation. Isn't it like in their cadence? Are you learning that it's like a part of? No, it's just when I go over there, because I, I do love France. I love the language, and I just love everything. I just, you know, who the fuck doesn't want to die in the south yeah. of France? You know, fucking, Are you going on yachts and stuff when you're over there? What's going uh -huh. on? You're probably enjoying a good life over there. You're not in no. a. I went to France. I was in a hostel going what to see a Backstreet Boys concert. <laughs> <laughs> to me, maybe. <laughs> You're my Jay Z. Is that okay? Sorry. You know what's funny? Me and my wife watched that uh, Below Deck. We watched the first season before uh -huh. it. They, you know, just spun into something else. And we were like, we should do that. You well, can't. How much that cost? It was like, Jesus Christ. Somebody was like, let's go. Someone you could buy us. a fucking house. It's like 250 grand for like three days. Someone was like, yeah, we should go. Um, we should go on the show and you pay to be on the. You're actually paying to be on the yacht. The people that are in the show. You get paid to go on the yacht. No, no, no. You pay to go on. And I was like, no, no, no. I've been in this business long enough. I'm not paying to do nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. You don't. You don't want to do that. Yeah. We didn't watch it enough. I wasn't a big enough fan. But we do like do you watch. So you do watch reality TV. Yeah. We my, might have some well, my, my my my. Yeah. My. Wife I love watched your it, wife, and then oh, yeah, she's the best. She's fucking she's the awesome. Best. She's I like her awesome. Instagram. I like her little when you guys go on your trips, and it's she needs me a little late. Oh god, that shit. I love that because I know what you're giving up. To. No, it's, it's it's like yeah. I was like, are we gonna have this experience or fucking video? It? I just imagine her being like, all right, now get my hands right here. She's like, I know, I know. No, but the thing is, she's so goddamn funny that like, you know, she has such a great sense of humor that we're able to kind of like. Uh, you know, get through shit like that. Yeah. Where like before, I don't know. Other relationships I had like that, I, I wouldn't. I just would have been like, I'm not doing this. Yeah, I'm just not doing this. Just like absolutely not. I know you have yeah. to like actually like the person to do the things they want. Yeah, well, I just you know I don't hide that I'm not having a good time in the videos. So that's funny. <laughs> What would be weird if you were like, yay, in the background? Oh, I'll do that to mock it. Yeah. To mock it. I'll have a look at like, like that stupid like fucking shit. Like, does anybody have a bad day on fucking Instagram? Everybody, there's no, always no, no, just no. like this whole buffet laid no, out no. with the thing. They have the crying selfies. That's worse than the happy buffet. A couple of people are literally weeping in their cars. I How about know. people committing crimes filming themselves? Well, there's a lot of people live streaming while they're driving, too, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Just fully talking and driving. There was a female comic who I was, I drove next to her while she was doing I was like, what are you doing? And the next time I was like, she's like, I crashed live. It was when they had, had Periscope. She's like, I, I crashed live. I have like 30,000 new followers. <laughs> yeah. I am like at the perfect age for all of this shit. Yeah. You know, I got like another seven years and then they'll kick me out, right? Well, and then like, no, they're uh, not going to kick you out. That's the problem. You're going to have to take yourself out. <laughs> you're going to have to, you're going to have to take yourself out back and shoot yourself nah. in the head because, no, 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 you're going to have to keep I going. I see myself living on the Cape teaching a comedy class. Oh boy. <laughs> Kyle sees, watch out. Someone's coming No, not motivational. I'm not trying to step but on he, Kyle's it was toes. A, but it was a, it was a gateway and now he's full of motivational. Uh, <laughs> Listen, Listen. none, I of, us have, can none I... of us have real jobs. If you can fucking figure out a way to just go on stage and make people feel good about themselves, which is really the inverse of anything I've ever done on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, God bless you. You make half the audience feel really good about themselves and the other half slap the people that are feeling good about it. I don't know. Do you think you've caused fights between 
couples. <laughs> That's not my goal. And then also, I hate when people try to break down, not, not saying you, but like people are like, what he's doing is, is he's fucking the, 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 the. It's like, no, I'm not. What I'm trying to do when I'm up there is I'm not, I'm not thinking. I'm yeah. not going. And now. You're with, about to get with this up. With this next one, I don't. Yeah. What I actually am trying to do is not think and not censor myself and just say whatever the fuck it is that I'm sick thinking. And sometimes it doesn't even make sense but it's just so fucked up that people laugh. But I, I like if I, but if I see that I'm causing some shit between Strife. the couple, I always go in and right. rescue the guy. I always, I yeah. will always be like, listen, you're mad at me now. <laughs> yeah. You're mad at don't do this to him. <laughs> don't do this to him. Let him have his moment of laughter. Yeah. Remember why you picked this man. <laughs> I started doing some new ideas last night when that crowd was not on board and it was wild. But I figured I may as well try him now. When they're all blinking at me. But what was last night? Last night, I just, it was. No, a, what, what is today? Thursday. Thursday was it was Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. That's Wednesday. sort of the last sort of stretching. I feel like Thursday. You got to get, you got to give them a good Saturday, show. you, you, you got to really hit them. And then Sunday is usually the best night for, for the crowd to go down because what you're seeing is you're loose from the weekend mm -hmm. and then you got new ideas and you're fucking around. That could be fun. Um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday usually is the sadness that makes somebody become a comedian. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then we like have Thursday, to have some semblance Thursday, of Thursday, Friday, Monday. Saturday <laughs> is like the dopamine. Like, if people applaud, I can't hear what happened to me. <laughs> I don't know what time. Well, so we're engaged and he wants to have a wedding. And I keep trying to explain to him, like, I kind of like have a wedding every night. I kind of have a wedding every night. Oh, as far as like them applauding? Like, I have like a bunch of people come and be like, <laughs> I can't tell you how glad I am that I'm on the other side of that. It's just not, I don't have, it's, the, it's, but I like that a, he's the girl and I'm the boy of this. <laughs> I'm just like. Oh God, you know what that means. <laughs> She's going to be a crying mess. Oh yeah. It's it's going to happen. It's like, I don't even care about this. I didn't know I wanted it. Then it really hits that yeah. like poor wound that I yeah. had. Yeah, where she's like, everything's then, wrong. Everything's... And then you never open the, the, the wedding album because it's just that ugly cry you don't want to look at. <laughs> admitting that you need people and you need love and you need to be held and it's too embarrassing for you to admit to. <laughs> it's embarrassing. The vows yeah. are so embarrassing. Hey, I'm a tough Philly chick. Yeah. No, you're the vows not. are a little embarrassing. Hey, well, everyone, I'm I know I'm going to talk about my, my gayest feelings <laughs> in front of you. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying. Like, this is what yeah. I would say for everybody. Just make it a party yeah, and, and, and have, the vows should be quick. Oh, my God. Those, you ever, oh, my God. You ever go to the, when, when, when they have like religious <laughs> and you don't even know what religion it is and you're just sitting there? And then so and so took the fucking golden rope <laughs> from the thing down at the end, and into this ceremony. And for those of you who aren't fucking this, but like you just sitting there going like, Jesus Christ, when is the booze coming? Yeah. Nobody cares. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. think so. I went to a wedding one time. Bride almost didn't show up, and then she was laughing. The entire was just nervous. <laughs> she was laughing through the whole vows. She was just. And he was holding her hands. Like, you know, you're the love of my life. Love my, and she was just you're laughing. Up. I, I was like. Are they divorced? No. Oh, wow. Okay. As far as I know. I don't know. But I just remember thinking like. Like I never, I could lost touch after that. I wasn't. I've gone to a couple. And you can tell when it's not going to. Oh, there was one that it last. I couldn't believe it lasted as long as it did. It lasted like 18 months. I it was feel... fucking hilarious. Like, because the groom. The groom went up to do a toast. He was toasting his new wife, and he was searching for words. He was going, "Hey, yeah, yeah, toast your wife." He was going, "Ah, uh, she, uh, <laughs> she." Uh, we're like, "Makes you laugh." Thank you. Makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Oh my god, that was such like. It was one of those things. Once you had to get out of the wedding to talk to somebody and just oh, be, and just be like, ah, <laughs> what the fuck was that? Yeah, it was fucking nuts. But they had, they had a real cool breakup, though. They were in the middle of an argument. And finally, she just goes, do you just not want to do this? He goes, yeah, I don't. And then they both kind of laughed. Right. And that was it. And it was so early on. There was no kids. You know, I think she had more money than him. And he's like, I don't need your money. Let's just fucking yeah. die, man. A little fist bump. And just kind of... <laughs> 
all right, I'll find a place. You know, let's put the game on. It was kind of, I feel like then they became friends and like, this is what your marriage could have been if you actually loved each other. And then but maybe you, they'll get back together. But you don't, no, no, they didn't make that mistake. And then they like each other's new significant others. I, I, I lost touch with like both of them, but yeah, I, I, always, I always, I was always like, life. I was amazed because everybody I knew that went through a divorce was like the worst thing ever. And they just, he was like laughing going, it was like this fucking, you know, the elephant in the room and somebody finally said it and the other person's like, oh my God, you were fan-. like, it was just, it was just so much fucking work. It was, yeah. they, they were the funniest fucking couple because they were so wrong for each other. It's literally like them walking into a diner would become like a fight of like yeah. who opened the oh, door and why would you go through that thing? Too, and they oh. fight in front of you and you're like, <laughs> It, like, it we always that, cause fights because we're very, like, It was that tension. Like, oh, oh, okay, okay, honey. Like, they're, they're using all the pet words, but you're hearing, yeah, shut the fuck up and all of that, you know. No, we'll be, like, affectionate. And he's, like, very sweet. He's very sweet. And so then, like, you need girls that. will be, like, he oh, has, He has to God. draw that out of you. Oh, my God. No, it's true. No, I, see the, I see the warm person in there. <laughs> I am warm. This is going to be your life's work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whatever happened to her on South Street. <laughs> I did get my nipples pierced at 14 on South Street. No, you what? She pierced my 14-year-old nipples, this lady said. At least it was a woman. That's one of the saddest things I've heard so... in, in months. I keep telling you, I, but you have to understand. In like, months, that's just the saddest to, thing I've ever heard saying, in my but life. But this is what I was saying to you. It's like, I would like tell these stories like, oh, don't we have these like funny stories and everyone would be like crying. Like, yeah, I mean, this is not normal. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, had to, like, I had to unlearn that. I mean, I guess it's still all funny, but. I was like, you guys didn't like. So wait, fourteen. You were obviously still living at home. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm assuming you didn't wear any more tight t-shirts. You did. Like, why do your fourteen-year-old no, titties fight. have handles? I got in a fight with. I heard a knockers. I'm oh, sorry. I I got a I got a, a fight with my uh, my dad or my mom once, and I was like, I got my nipples pierced. I smoke weed. I drink. I like told her everything. I have sex. She was like. She said, well, once you said you had your nipples pierced, I kind of filled in the blanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just say it was the little first thing that penetrated your daughter. <laughs> she just said that. You like to be choked. I get it. I get it. Jesus. Let me... <laughs> was it something I did? I'm 14 years old. I got my mom. I go, I can only come when I'm choked. Can you imagine? Ah, I'm like, ah. Oh, my God. No, she could blame my dad, obviously, for that Woo. one. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so you have a daughter. Did that change you? Do you have an older son or older daughter? My daughter, and then I had a son. Oh, okay. And was that wild? Oh, they're they're amazing and they're fucking hilarious. Yeah. Oh yeah. When over the summer, my daughter was like singing uh, about my bald head, and it actually <laughs> to a, another song, and it worked out. I have it on video, and I I would be on the road just watching it, Aww. dying laughing. Well, you know, comedians like that's affection. If somebody yeah. takes the time. To be to creatively trash me, I'm like, yeah. oh, this person, this person loves me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it, it de- yeah, definitely. That's what got me to stop drinking. Yeah, I mean, it took you know about a year and a half after my daughter was born, almost two years, and I was just like, I can't do. It. I, I, well, it must have been just hard to be like hung over with baby energy too. Wasn't even the hungover. It was when I would be blitzed and I would be like, if somebody came through the door right now, I could not protect my family. <laughs> I'd be like, they're upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, your your uncle's here. You know, just not re- recognizing it's an, an intruder. So, um, did you ever date comics back in the day? No, good oh boy. I was uh, introverted. I mean, I, 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 uh, yeah, I was a fucked up dude. <laughs> I was. I, I just want to be clear. I didn't ask that. No, 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 no. It looked I, like I asked you a really prying question. And I... No, it was just like when I just look back to my, I was like this self-sustained unit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just sort of was like, uh, I used to pride myself on how long I could go uh, without talking to people. Like when I would go out and do college gigs and like, I would try to go like the whole day. Let's see if I, I don't like, and it was this, it's a long fucking boring story. I don't want to get into why I was doing that, but it had to do with shit that happened to me. So like, I, uh, yeah, that whole like, you know, killing at the cellar and then standing at the top of the stairs waiting for the hot chicks to come out, you know, I always felt like they like that. bears, like the salmon were coming upstream and they'd hit on everything. I was not that person. I would kill and I would just kind of like, you know, I, I would be walking around with the high yeah. of killing. Yeah. Like I sort of lived and died by my sets. If I had like a right. bad set, then I would 
the feelings of how I felt about myself, I would carry those until I, and I'd be like, I have you to have do to another set. I have to do another. Yeah, yeah I, was like a fucking, I don't get another set. I was a junkie. So, um, and then what was also great was stand up allowed me to hide how socially awkward I was. So I could always miss like going to weddings. Like, yeah. oh my God, I got to get a date. I have to go out and dance and all that. Can't do it. I'm, yeah, I'm doing the fucking stress factory. So, um, <clears throat> you know, uh yeah i was <laughs> I, I was not dateable well i always think it's like because there are there are the guys that like got into comedy that legit just to get the salmon the tuna oh they yeah they did that and then you go like when does this end and a lot of them are pushing 50 <laughs> they're pushing 50 and it's getting weird it's getting weird you're going when does this just never end no my favorite thing is is that they think that these these bad boys or these these edgy guys. It's like, dude, you are ten years into being creepy. Yes, <laughs> you know, I I can figure like New York and L.A. You you can exist out there for another mm -hmm. ten years, be, and you're not weird because there's so many people doing it. But like once you get into your forties, when you're still out there, like you know, I mean, I remember being in my uh, like twenty what was I twenty eight. 28 and I met this chick at this thing and she was 20 and I was hanging out with her and I said what's your major and I was like what and I I, I was like I can't do this. I don't have the mental capacity do to do. Well to, at 28 yeah. eight years younger than you is like yeah it was just like I was in college like 20 years ago so I yeah. felt like so I just sort of was just like <laughs> I just sort of wrapped it up <laughs> it's like you know I go by the time you're <laughs> my age I think I'm gonna have like cirrhosis so let's just fucking leave that yeah, alone. Well, I always find because I did. He's younger than me. It's weird, but it's OK. Um, but I dated older guys and I was they the type of older guys I dated were the ones that like never settled down older guys. Uh -huh. And then they would be so like I always found they were always and this wasn't all of them, but the ones I was attracted to for whatever reason, they would always try to bring me up to their oldness instead of like, why don't you like take some of my youth? Why don't you come to like my age? Because It doesn't work. But even they'd like, be like, at that I'd age, be like, oh my god, I'm so excited! I got like um, this great gig, or whatever. It doesn't last. None of this good fortune lasts. Stuff like that. About oh, me. they did that. Yes, oh, no, I'd no, no, be man. like, what the hell? I like, thought it was like you, like, hey, it's ten o'clock, let's go out, no, and he's no, sitting there in his pajamas. Pajamas no, no. are on, sweetheart. I'm no, not I'd going be like, anywhere. Life is over. You're done. Like, don't you shouldn't have hope. I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, all right, well. <laughs> That's not really an older person energy. That's more an, an older asshole. <laughs> Let's not take, you know, like, I love how people get, like, blamed for that shit. Like, I love how L.A. is getting blamed for what's happening in Nashville. Like, these fucking L.A. people. It's like, nobody that's from L.A. is moving there. It's people that were from somewhere else, moved, moved to, to LA, LA, are now sick of LA, and then they're going there. Nobody who fucking grew up in the Valley what? wants to go live in Nashville, fucking Tennessee. <laughs> I can't listen to Travis Tritt. It's my favorite country name to yell. I just can't believe the thing that really gets me is people complaining about the homeless people in L.A. And then you go like in Austin, there's so the homeless people are like. They are in your face, it's like the craziest homeless people I've ever met in my life. And oh, yeah. I can't tell you the people are like, yeah, we had to leave L.A. to come to Austin because of all the homeless people. And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, you do. I'm not saying we don't have homeless people. Don't you act like you don't have homeless people. Oh, yeah. And our homeless people are cuter, okay? No, homeless and then they actually, Austin has people that actually have homes that look like they're homeless. <laughs> yes, they're trying to like, <laughs> those fucking white kids with their dreadlocks and shit. It's just like, oh my God. Jesus Christ. Somebody get some running water. It's so weird to want yeah. to look so dirty. It's got to be a personality disorder. They probably will end up being homeless. I feel like you dress for the. I feel the like they, they, they want adventure. But they just don't want to leave their town or something. Like if you just you need, they don't have any stories. So then they got yeah. they got to dress like they have a story. I like, just you know what I think is, is is fascinating right now is like how DJs have infiltrated so many parts of life that never needed music, <laughs> but because we're all staring at our phones. Like we used to be, people brought the vibe, but now we're all just sitting in silence. <laughs> so they have to like score like going to target you know or like the gap i saw a guy spinning with the gap it is weird You're like what the hell is going on and they're always playing too loud but it does help you from having the people ask you if you need help at least oh that because that's annoying you're like i think i know where the fucking i'll come to you if i need help yeah like you want to get annoying. a coffee and there's somebody djing over in the corner <laughs> and i'm trying to always try to like 
do the stand up equivalent. Like, all right, I've done this gig. Oh my God. Like, nobody knew, that. nobody knew there was a show. Nobody's <laughs> listening. So I always have like, I, it's not, uh, I'm not blaming DJs. <laughs> I'm saying, we, you know, staring at the phone because I'm beyond addicted to my phone. Yeah, it's good. I don't even remember the car right over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a Tesla and it dings. But I don't know where great white sharks mate. <laughs> it, it dings when the light turns green. It, like the Tesla goes like, time to look up from your phone. Ding. Oh, wow. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's safer. It's like, ding, time. Yeah. Each in a good Why mood. are we pretending that this isn't happening? Well, that saves me from beeping at you. <laughs> like I'm not looking at my phone. <laughs> Fucking LA people. No, but I don't get beeped out like that anymore. I do get in trouble with the Tesla though because it's so fast. You can just... It just Cut like, someone off and you're not even there to deal with yeah. the consequences. They're amazing, boring looking cars. I know, but it's like, do you need it to be look like anything when it's that fast? No, no. Gone. No, they're they're amazing. <laughs> I, I do like there's a whole thing where they go, uh, there's an Instagram thing out there. It's like, it says back, bef back before all this electric car bullshit, we had cars that ground all this muscle. And they showed all these muscle cars. It's like they're completely blowing off from 1975 <laughs> to about 1992 when we made some of the shittiest design to fucking they couldn't even go up like a hill there was cars like if you had a four cylinder like chevette you couldn't turn on the air conditioner if you're going up the fucking oh, hill really? you had, you had like, to shut it off you had to make oh, choices oh yeah you had to like okay what are we doing it's like you're in a plane and you're or in a boat throw some shit overboard so we can fucking make it up the hill and also not only that there was electric cars like a hundred fucking years ago it's yeah. just the oil companies won like they did with like nuclear energy, which I just found out actually was a great solution. And all that no nukes hippie shit was actually, it came from oil companies. Oh, really? And they fed it into their brains. And that's, and we come full circle to dreadlocks, white guys in dreadlocks. I like when, I love that shit. Like those, those covert corporate things. Like when I was growing well, up. Isn't it all that? Um, Is it sad how much it, I'm I like sorry, how you just did Am that. I turning I, into no, no. Randy Quaid? No, I like how you did that. Like you were like, are we going to? Are we going to go down? You're like, isn't it all that? No, there was a, uh, I talked about this on another podcast. There was this thing when I was uh, like 20 or 22, the Suzuki Samurai came out. It was a little fun four wheel. It was basically a affordable Jeep. And all these young people. Were, I know. I remember this. Yeah. Like so that. it was killing it. And then all of a sudden you just started hearing all these stories that they were tipping over <laughs> and all these college kids were dying. And then they just disappeared. <laughs> and then years later, you found out Chrysler that owned Jeep. Just spread that rumor like, oh, oh, did you hear about the samurais? Like the mean girl. And now we'd be like, we need to see the video of it. There's some, we watch a lot of like hidden camera or not hidden camera, like cop cam things. How does a theory that they just came up with the, the cams for cops just so they can make extra money on YouTube channels? Because they I will click, click, click. It is very fun oh, you to watch, watch those. Oh, it's fun. I like the Criterion channel. That's what like that's how far away we are. Like my wife likes. <laughs> Real Housewives. I'm like, let's what because Criterion Channel. That was like the best fucking movies that I've never seen. They'll have like a theme. Like last month they had like uh, car movies. Yeah, I got to watch Steven Spielberg's first one. Um, <clears throat> one of his first movies that he did. His first dreams were DreamWorks Cars. No, oh, it was. Uh, I already forget the name of it because I have a fucking cell phone brain. Like, what the fuck was it called? Duel. Beautiful. And I was like, I'm gonna watch this thing and I'm gonna see like young Steven Spielberg. Figuring it out. He, that guy was the shit from the beginning. Yeah. Beautifully shot. And then this month, because it's Halloween, I fucking hate horror movies. Oh, we love them. They scare the shit out of me. Okay, well, go go on the Criterion channel. Right. They have like all of these. They, they got ones from like, you know, like I'm sure, you know, it's like porn, you know, where you start with something light and then yeah, you just go yeah. down. Like with horror movies, you start with America and then all, tr all fucking, it all leads to Asia. <laughs> Japan. And like, do we Asia, Japan. Asian horror filmmakers they're trying to damage you permanently yeah, they're like they you want up. you dude bobby lee he recommended too i didn't talk to bobby for like i don't think i've ever brought up movies again to bobby lee um but we watched one the other night that had uh it was lily taylor and then and uh christopher walken was in it was called addiction it was this vampire movie it wasn't really scary as much as it was weird but it was just cool because it was kind of shot right when I came to New York and they were right on West 3rd Street yeah. at one point, right in front of Ben's Pizza. And uh, I don't know. Would you move back to New York? Not with the kids. Um, Seems crazy, right? To have kids there. Yeah. I'd I just, have to be like the subway kid. You can't, but then are you just letting your kids go on a subway? Yeah, no, no. And also like, I, you know, kids should have a childhood like 
the trees and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and if your kid lives in New York and sees trees, they've been kidnapped, okay? Yeah. Well, I mean, then they say, oh, you go to Central Park, but like, that's what everybody does. And then you're just there and it's just a lot, there's a lot I'm of sure variables. I if I could do the lifestyle again. The suburbs is perfect. Yeah. Because if you live in the middle of nowhere and you, and you go out to the trees, you got to have like a gun with you because you're going to run into like a bobcat yeah. or a mountain lion or some shit. If you're in the city, you're going to run into a crackhead or a fucking <laughs> or some shit. Yeah, so there's the definitely suburbs... going to be like a loose penis outside of the oh, zipper. Yeah. yeah. Real random. Unzipped. There's always like, unzipped. I'm like, how are there so many penises? I can't tell you how many I saw. Oh, that just brought back a memory. <laughs> <laughs> Washington Square Park, walking with Big J. Of course, Jay, you know, he's fucking bulletproof. He just laughed it off. Mm -hmm. It was a guy dressed as a woman. I'm not going to say, I don't even know what the term is. It's changed well, so many times. It always starts with a T, though. They have to tell you, though. Yeah, a T, right? And he was sitting there. He had a mini skirt. <laughs> just sitting there like that, sitting on the curb, just junk. <laughs> I think Jay just goes, he looked over, he just goes, oh, yeah, bro, check that out. And I was just like, ah. And, he, and you know, Jay, you know, Jay, Jay doesn't like, he has a quiet laugh sometimes. It was that, yeah. you know, on his face and he smiles. Yeah, I'm so happy you did he, that to No, too. it was just like, <laughs> I just love that he looked, he wasn't phased. And then to get the laugh, he had me look. I was just, like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jay. I will like that is like burned into my fucking brain. It's just, I will never forget that. <laughs> yeah. I remember my mom told me that my, we, my mom grew up in, in, not in the city of New York, but in upstate New York. And uh, she told me that when she moved to Philadelphia with my dad, she, like, almost every time she rode the subway, someone would, like, flash them their penis. <laughs> like, she would, like, she would, like, um, she tripped one. She tripped. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it makes me laugh so hard. Like, I just don't, I don't understand my mom that tripped. fetish. Like, what, my mom is it, tripped. Is it, is it, like, you just want somebody to go, like, zoinks when they see you? Does it make it feel bigger? She tripped instead of a guy helping her up. He shot her dick. God, just grab a hold. I'll pull you up. I think once he was like, do you know what the time is? And she looked at her watch and then there was a dick out. Do you think if people started laughing at flashers, like that whole thing would go Maybe away? Maybe they want that. I don't know. Well, no, I, I got... think they want, they, it's the, the shock and the horror of my my dick makes people run away. <laughs> well, I was I was doing like a power walk. I was doing a power walk when I lived in. Oh, you were asking Hollywood. for it. <laughs> I was. I was. I was like, I'm in my power. I, I nothing can't can even take tell me you. Down now. I can't even tell you what's happened to me in this town. Whenever I power walk. So I'm power walking. You know, I've I've a. a Do look. you have leg warmers on? I had a fanny pack. I yeah, was like, I was like, let's like... go, let's go. And um, this to the guy, limit, limit. He, he pulls, I was listening to "Won't Back Down." <laughs> Um, this guy pulls up in his car and he, I don't know if he beeped or whatever, but he made sure he got my attention and he was jerking off his flaccid penis. I was like, who is this for? It wasn't even hard. It was like offensive. It was rude. And then I was like, Hey, fuck you. Like I had to give him like the yeah. chase him, but he got so excited when I saw him. Then it filled up. up. <laughs> then it filled up. You actually helped him out. You were like a fluffer. <laughs> A fanny packed fluffer. If I was his defense attorney, I'd be like, well, why did you yell at him? I mean, you knew that would turn him on. I know, she'd be like, yeah, yeah, I just start masturbating. That's yeah. the only way he stays limp. So if I'm back into him, I think you'd be like, ah. You can't laugh at it. Listen, I watched Unforgiven. I know you can't laugh at a man. It's the worst crime a woman could do. Do you remember Unforgiven? In the beginning, it's like, so Clint Eastwood is when he's the bounty hunter. Uh huh. I never saw that. Oh, it's I great. don't know how I never saw it. It's good. You'll love it. So he's like a retired bounty hunter and um, he has a pig farm. He left the, the bad <laughs> life to join this pig farm. Oh, this is cute. Uh, to speaking join the, of to... flashing, <laughs> it comes uh... bring her bone, bring her bone her away. But anyway, so he's like what's left this like- Richard her... Branson, what's your dog's name? Randy Jackson. Randy Quaid. Jackson, that's right. He's a good boy. An but, excited um, fella. He is. He actually humped his, his toy so hard the other day that he took a shit on his side of the bed. It was <laughs> something I've never seen in my life, except when I was on that walk with that fanny pack. All right. <laughs> that guy jerked off and shit himself. That That's might be wanted. why. That might be why I had a weird set. I was cleaning tacos. But, um, oh, so in Unforgiven, the whole thing is he goes back to being a bounty hunter because he needs money and there's a 
a bounty out on this guy. He goes to a brothel and he pulls his pants on. This lady laughs at his dick and he slices her face up. And there's a bounty. And so I'm like, I learned my lesson. Thank you, Clint. Don't you laugh at a man. I'll slice your mouth up. I'll slice up your face. Wow. No laughing at guys. <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> to tease people. Yeah. I think I'll skip that movie. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good, good night. Bad. It's a good night of entertainment. Well, you're always, guys... well, that's the first scene, but you know, it's like he's always like, "Who's the good guy? Who's the bad guy?" But I even watched like Bridges of Madison County. Like Clint Eastwood, really, he rules. Oh, he does, and he kind of ruled for like I don't know how many decades in a row. He, his mom is uh, Laotian, and she loves Gran Torino. She like loves when they do all the Asian joke. <laughs> this is the funniest thing she's ever seen. You know, I, I used to do this thing to make Nia laugh. Like we would be, you know, driving down the street and be like, oh, Nia, look, 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 it's John Travolta. And it would be somebody who just kind of looked like him. <laughs> so I auditioned for uh, Gran Torino. And I Are was you like, in it? No. Oh, God. I'm sorry. And, and I was, uh, I walked by this golf cart and I just mumbled to myself, hey, look, it's Clint Eastwood. And it was. And oh, I, no. I, no, I didn't see him though, but I didn't get to take him in. <laughs> it was just this, you know, he's like 6'4". Yeah. This was like in the 2000s, so I don't know how old he was. He's in his 90s now, so he's like he was in the 70s. And I just made the like, I make the joke so much with her that I was just doing it to myself. And then I was sitting there, and then this actor came in. He said, "Did you fucking see that?" So what? He said, "That was Clint Eastwood in that golf car." And I was like, "Oh, oh my fuck!" God. I got because I, I, he was I, I I was coming from behind. I just yeah. saw him sitting there like that. Um, so that's my Clint Eastwood oh, story. Oh, I wanted to ask you. What, um, because I know that you've now met a lot of like really cool people. Who have you been star the most starstruck by, and who would you be starstruck by meeting? Oof. Uh, it's usually people that I liked when I was a kid, like athletes, musicians, and uh, you know, actors and that type of stuff. I guess so. I'd say uh, meeting Henry Winkler. Oh, that was well, so awesome. it was unbelievable. It's like this guy's the was the Fonz. This guy made my my childhood happier. Um, I would say, yeah, him, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, did you meet him? Yep, I met him. He came out to a co a comedy thing. Wow, that's awesome. When they yeah. come to you, it's yeah, that's like, no, 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 no. no. He wasn't coming to see me. He, oh, he no. it was a, it was a thing that I was on. It was like a benefit or something like that. That's how I met him. But um, you met him after he saw you perform. Yeah, I, I can't. It was, it was really like. Holy shit. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. People like that. And then I met, uh, put me on the spot here. I can't really remember. Oh, like, I Rick Flair. Oh, I met Rick Flair too. And Rick Flair. I was just like, I can't. This is the nature boy. Like, I can't. I, I can't. stood outside the bathroom at the comedy store and I went, I'm sorry. People are going to ask you for this, but I'm going to need to get a bath a picture with, from you. And he goes, hold on. Look at the bathroom. Same guy. <laughs> and he's gripping me. He gripped me on the side. <laughs> I was like, okay, Rick. Oh, yeah. It's like, have a, have a grab, Rick. Have a grab, Rick. It's his finishing move. Let's go, baby. I did a, I did a, uh, one time I did a, um, a benefit for uh, Mario Lemieux's foundation in Pittsburgh. Steve Byrne got me the gig and everybody loves that guy. That guy's like the best. And it was my entire childhood of sports heroes. And I was just looking out and a lot of them had aged really well. So they still look like themselves, yeah. just a little older. And I was just up there and I would look and there would be like Marcus Allen and then Dan Marino and all of, like all of these guys that I just grew up. I had their football cards. People even stuff. I know. Yeah. Yeah. No. And there was like hockey players um, from back when the hockey was on the USA network that I used to watch guys that got into like fights and scored huge goals and stuff. It was just, it was, it was, that was probably one of them that out of all those nights. Yeah. Jim McMahon. Do you perform better when you see people you like in the audience or does it not affect you it used to affect me now i just uh i just uh i don't, I don't fuck i just kind of just do uh just go out and do what i do but mm -hmm. like uh, there's definitely been i remember when i was younger if there was someone famous in the crowd i would be looking to see if they were laughing because i would just be like well they're famous so they must know something so if yeah. they're laughing so yeah. one time must i was doing something about me i was doing stand up Little and me yeah, I was doing stand up at the cellar and William Shatner was there. Wow. And that's he didn't a good not one. only did he not laugh, he didn't even look up at the stage. And that <laughs> bugged me for years. And then I thought, like, wait a minute, there was an entire generation that got on on TV making fun of him. 
So he probably didn't want to go. And yeah. He was probably sitting there going like, oh my God, I'm just going to be raw. He felt like you didn't like him. I'm going to be like, raw meat for these yeah. guys. I'm like, I, Captain, I can't. Like, whatever that yeah. stupid impression is. Um, so yeah, there was another time there was somebody in the crowd and he didn't laugh at all. And then, uh, what's her face? <laughs> Judy. Uh, Judy Gold. Judy Gold goes up. And she said to the guy, hey, how about a fucking smile or something? She just got right in his face. And then he just kind of this bewildered look and then looked over. And then somebody's like, oh, he's got advanced. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but it's why I love Judy, because she said what we were all, we all wanted him to laugh. And then when he didn't, she like attacked him. Because she was killing. Yeah. Oh, my God. She's one of the funniest fucking. Yeah, she's so funny. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense how funny she is. I know she's hilarious. I don't know her that well though, because I left New York too soon. No. Um. And she has always been that funny and has not lost any steam. Yeah. At all, it's still just it's like uh, what's his face, Louis Black. Like yeah. it's just some people they have that fire in their belly and it never goes out. But sometimes I'm like, isn't he sick of yelling? No. <laughs> like doesn't he have like doesn't he go to like a doctor i gotta and tell go, you something the first, and he's like what's going on you got some polyps you're like uh the first time i saw him was one of the hardest i ever laughed yeah i saw him at the comedy cellar when this was like in the 90s when it was going through a, the post 80s dip and there was like three people in the crowd and it was one of those fucking july summer days yeah where it was like a hundred percent humidity a hundred degrees out and he comes <laughs> In his suit. This is before anybody knew who he was. Yeah. He looked like fucking Willie Loman, right? He just comes walking in and he got on stage and he just, he got that fucking finger going and it was all, it was real. Yeah. It was real. He was talking about how much he hated the fucking city and the heat and then it just got him going. And I, I never seen, like, it was like three, it was a three top and a two top just sitting there. And he had these people, they were like leaning on yeah. the fucking empty Stitches, chairs. Yeah. And I don't think he ever even looked at them. It was like watching this guy in his apartment just walking around you know, when you yeah. start losing your shit by yourself. Um, no, and that's why, because I don't want to watch false anger or yeah. any of that shit, and, but his shit. Or how about people that, are, that act like silly and you can see how angry they are? That pisses me off the most. I'm like, fucking just get angry. And then oh, you right. will see them have an angry set and they kill and you're like, oh, the truth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People that I think I've, like I've did like But VH1. sometimes I don't think that they're like, maybe in touch with or, or like their thing is like they want to be like nice because they, they don't want to they've already been yelled at enough yeah <laughs> so they're trying to keep everything nicey nice but they have this anger from not being heard or being beat on or whatever i get mad at people when i can see there's anger and they don't give it to me i'm like come on i'll be like so pissed and then i they if they give me a slice i'm okay right. then i'm in forever i give see, me a nod. I see it. I'm like i know you're fucking pissed Really nice people. A lot of them, there's an anger underneath it because they They've are been put into the position. Well, no, no, but they're nice and they're courteous, and no so they either. have this expectation of other people and everybody else. So many people that they run into are not being that way. So yeah. it, it, it's it's that funny <laughs> duality, of like. <laughs> causes I know. Them to I've, snap. I've been I've been in that trap before where I like find myself overextending for people, and then you're getting so pissed they're not doing anything nice back. Oh yeah, it's just, and they're like, "This is obviously I'm a psychotic person." <laughs> yeah, why, why am I doing this? Person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm like, "Hello, I got you a present. Where's mine?" <laughs> we're uh, we're at hour fifteen. Oh, All right, yeah, yeah. Let's because oh. I have to. I gotta go. I gotta go write the next thing that I can't promote. <laughs> I know. Oh, I have a question for you. Yes, I'm doing an audition for a um, animated show. How off book do you expect people to be when they're doing animated? Do you care as much? No. Or do you still because they're you're just gonna have a script anyway, right? No, it's more like what what you're bringing. I would be, de be definitely be familiar with it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, oh, I would just just know they they, they they want. Yeah, they, want, they, they could. They they, they yeah. want to book it. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, ca casting uh, that thing that I can't talk about is was that was like the thing where you just you know you have this wall, you know, and you have all the characters and just like as the it gets cast and you see like the pictures and stuff. It's just another thing you don't have to fucking deal right, with. Yeah. So they, you know, Matt Damon has a great thing on that one. Yeah. They, he, he said he would go in with like a chip on his shoulder. Like, they want you to be great. Yeah. So just go in, have fun, be silly and all that. And then also be fucking cool because yeah. they're going to have to work with you. So if you kind of come in like fucking, you know, even mm -hmm. like just pulling back, like, 
oh hey hi yeah yeah <laughs> right there it's just like oh God. I, I i need a person <laughs> Well, it's like I, I had to say this Bobby once we've been I don't like, somebody who's taken out of the oven too soon. Well, just anywhere where you're like, I just, I, nobody has time for anyone's like low That's kind of funny to me an adult that has premature baby five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see that in people. Sometimes I have to ask them like, were you premature? I can tell. You seem yeah. like you have abandonment issues. You feel yeah. lonely, don't you? Yeah. You look a couple of months. Um, we have reptiles. Are you afraid of reptiles? Yes. Would you hold a snake? No. Would you hold a skink? A what? A blue tongue skink, a lizard. No. Okay. That's, I didn't come here for that. Well, we're just we're just gonna see. You're in our house now, so we're just wondering. But okay, well, so that's a good I'm answer. Glad Thank you're you. not like one of these weirdos that just has them slithering around. Oh, I'm just like here you go. <laughs> Are you scared of reptiles and something just starts crawling yeah, in your neck? He's friendly. <laughs> yeah, like they're. Uh... We figured now people are coming in our house. We'll see if people like snake. People I'm fascinated like by all of that shit, but. I don't have that. I know it's that a, if it comes naturally thing. to you. It's weird. That's his thing. He came out to me like right before we got engaged as a reptile guy. Ooh, that's a big. Isn't it big? It's a big thing. Yeah, yeah. You don't look like a reptile guy. Yeah, I didn't really realize I was until I just went to the reptile store one day and I was like, I want to have like all of these. <laughs> and now he does. And he literally every time I go on the road, he gets another reptile. Yeah, yeah. We have a whole room down there of just all reptiles. <laughs> I said you just go to sleep like did you see that fucking yeah. thing that that woman she had like a python and she was snuggling with it she would spoon <laughs> with it and it would wrap itself around her and then she brought it to the vet and it was going like it's not eating it's not eating yeah, i can't yeah. get it to eat and it's like and she said you know i sleep with it every he goes wait you does it wrap so <laughs> it was making room for her <laughs> i was measuring her it's the reptiles are reverse dogs <laughs> <laughs> well they're so cold too they're like freezing they're just cold-blooded, yeah. evil, but they're cute. All right. Well, Randy better have you. his fucking he dumb head on a swivel. I did say if Randy dies, he's out. We're done. All right. Dude, if one of your reptiles kills that dog, it, uh, like at what point? There's like no statute of limitations for her to not bring that up in an argument. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's well, over. None of them will. They're all... They're all That's good. what they all say. He also go like, oh, this snake will never bite me. Bitten within 30 <laughs> seconds. It's so hilarious. He gets his like what shit. Kind of, I have all snake? baby snakes though. So I'm like raising them. I have like a ball python. You're not raising them. Python. You're watching them grow up. <laughs> you can't raise a reptile. Are you giving it life lessons? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're getting good. But I got, we have like that Brazilian rainbow boa. That's like. We named it after my ayahuasca shop. And how fucking big is that thing going to get? They're going to get. It's going to get like huge. five feet. <laughs> That's the thing. Okay. And then so, what are you going to do with it? They're uh they're cool. You put them in I build terrariums. Like I build like like a what, nature What the fuck thing. are you building that in this thing? <laughs> no, well, what, I I have them in those there. things are supposed to be in a jungle. Not a fucking one bedroom with a fucking podcast loft. It's two bedroom. Two be Oh. It's two bedroom, two bath. Sorry. Cool. Sorry. Oh fuck. You guys should get some elk in here. <laughs> no, um no, it is going to be a problem, but we're, I'm like, you can't get any more because once we have a house, it's kind of okay. But being in an apartment, it's like, we got to self Simple cope. fix. It's a simple fix. Let them out? No. Just, just turn off the sun lamp. Turn <laughs> on the die. AC. <laughs> <laughs> to kill them. No, but I'm like, we should sell coke. Like if we're going to stay in this apartment. I would stick that fucking thing <laughs> in the fucking freezer before I would sleep in a fucking There's house. There's no room in the freezer. That's where the mice once are. You, once you see them, though, you're like... All right. All right. Anyway, That's thank it. you so much for I'm coming. Out. I am fucking out. I am out. I had such a good time thank until you for I coming. found out too much about your life. <laughs> All right. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for coming. Bro. All right. We really do. We love each other. It's the meat and potatoes. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the Stannies, Annies, and Fannies, and all of the Zeeper Nannies, yeah. Welcome to Annie Wood. This is the land of the Stannies, Annies, and Fannies, and all of the Zeeper Nannies. I'm going up by Oaxaca. I'm about to prosper. Blingy on my drinky, and Randy is living proper. Protector of the sick, she never let her fishes die. Never known to tell a lie, she even fixed Todd's eyes. Shout out to the slugs, shout out Woody's too, shout out that's the and Kalila and the Annie Wood crew. Cause this is Annie Wood, you know that this is how I'm living, real and never pretending shit, you know that this is a gift. Welcome to Annie Wood, this is the land of the Stannies, Annies and Fannies, and all of the Zeeper Nannies.